Good morning and welcome. I'm Pastor Philip Komeyer serving you here at Benicia Lutheran Church. We have a few announcements this afternoon, which is March 14th. We have a Zoom fellowship hour at four o'clock. You're welcome to join us for that. It's just a social time. Each Tuesday, so this coming Tuesday, we have a brief Lenten meditation, which we invite you to, to participate in by just tuning in on the computer. And this week's theme is on Holy Communion. And at 7 p.m. then on Wednesday, this is true for each Wednesday during Lent, at seven o'clock we have a discussion on the topic that we made available to you on Tuesday evening. Finally, we have a communion service, a drive up communion service next Sunday the 21st at 10.30. So 10.30 to 11.30, you may join us for Holy Communion. Thank you. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Invite you to join us in the confession and absolution as we prepare for worship. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you to take a moment now to reflect on God's word and for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is from Numbers, chapter 21, beginning at the fourth verse. From Mount Hor, they set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And we loathe the, this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he takes away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if the serpent bit anyone, he who looked at the bronze serpent and lived. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at the fourth verse. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for today, which will also serve as the basis of our meditation, is recorded in John, the third chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may clearly be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Up to 
gospel for today, the basis of our meditation, has that one verse, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's a verse that most of you are familiar with. You perhaps had to memorize it in Sunday school or confirmation class, or maybe you just picked it up because it's so common, so familiar. We might say that it's the gospel in miniature or the gospel in a nutshell is how it's sometimes known. We might say that it's really the Bible in miniature. For all of Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, focuses on Jesus Christ and what God has done for us in Jesus. I like, however, that the gospel reading for today 
starts out with an Old Testament reference from the book of Numbers. We read that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. That incident in the Old Testament, which we had recorded in the Old Testament reading for today, is that the Israelite people who have been set free from bondage, from slavery in Egypt, they are on the way to the promised land, but they're going through this desert. It's a question of, a lot of travel time, particularly because they were frequently murmuring and complaining. They had little faith sometimes, even though God had opened up the Red Sea for them to pass through. Oh, how we forget the manifestations of God's power in our own life. How quickly we block out of our mind, it seems, or the devil or the world distracts us so that we even forget about that essential of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, the Israelites, in going through this desert journey to the promised land, were getting impatient. And what do we do when we get impatient? We murmur and complain. We bellyache. And the Israelites were murmuring and complaining to God and God's representatives. And God did not take it lightly. Oh, God is a merciful, gracious God. But at times, he does speak words of judgment. At times, he disciplines us. He challenges us. And in this particular incident, incident in the Old Testament, God sends fiery serpents, poisonous snakes that bite countless people of the Israelite nation. And that brings them to their senses. They complain to God and God responds and when they recognize their sin against their rescuer from Egypt, the creator of the universe, they repent. And they ask for forgiveness. They ask for mercy. They ask for some relief. And what does God have Moses and Aaron do? But to put on a tree, like a cross, a serpent, a serpent made of gold that they are to look at. And if they look at that serpent, they are healed. Now, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? It was, after all, too late for a vaccine, too late for them to put together some medicinal formula. Those who were bitten were poisoned and were approaching death. But before death came, if they would merely look to that gold serpent on the cross, they would be healed. Pretty amazing story, isn't it? And how does our gospel begin? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. You see, all the Bible is connected, isn't it? In the Old Testament, we have prophecies and promises of the God to come, the deliverance that they would experience through a Messiah, some deliverer, some savior. And in the New Testament, he has come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But then... There are these passages that come after this beautiful gospel in a a miniature form, in a nutshell. For example, verse 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So many people, so many of us, tend to think that God is a God who simply judges or condemns. But here, Jesus says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The world? That means you and me. It means everyone. Without distinction. Men, women, people of every race. Rich, poor, smart, not so smart. We are all in this world. We are all in need of saving. But that's an issue for a lot of people, isn't it? So many people say, why, I don't need to be saved. I'm doing pretty good on my own. I don't need this religion stuff. But the scriptures have a different perspective. Verse 18 says, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. It's like we already have been bitten by the poisonous snakes. We already have the fatal disease. We're already condemned. That's not good news. That's bad news. And that's the situation that we are without the rescue, the saving work of Jesus Christ. But you say, well, that's your thinking, that's your religion, that's not my understanding, that's not the way I see it, and that's the crux of the matter. We continue verse 19, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Jesus, of course, was the light of the world. Many people acknowledge that he was a good teacher. Many people say, yeah, the Sermon on the Mount, that was a good teaching, and, and that's really all we need is that Sermon on the Mount, how to get along with one another. But those people probably have never really carefully read the Sermon on the Mount. For if you read the Sermon on the Mount, you also have the idea how much we fall short of the mark, how much we fall short of the teaching of Jesus Christ. People love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. And then our gospel reading continues on. Verse 20, For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. In John, the first chapter, we have this reference in verses 4 and 5. In him, namely in Jesus, was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. In other words, Jesus comes, and his life was the light of men. His light shines in the darkness of this world, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus lives and reigns. He willingly died for the sins of the world, for your sins and mine. He died to set us free. He was raised on the third day that we might walk in newness of life. That's why this Jesus is unique, one of a kind, the only Son of the Father, the creator of the universe. That's why the Apostle Paul, who had been a persecutor of Christians, when he sees Jesus, the light of the world, his whole life is turned around, and he, who was a persecutor, now becomes a missionary. He, who was a persecutor, now becomes persecuted as he promotes, as he shares 
the good news of God's coming in Jesus Christ, this one who was hung on the cross, the one to whom we look for salvation. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, young man that he was mentoring in the faith, training to be a missionary. He writes to Timothy and says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. So there is an inclusivity in the gospel in the sense that the gospel is for the world, for all people without discrimination. And yet there's an exclusivity as well. For Jesus is the one and only Redeemer. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So Jesus has come. And that makes all the difference because he was not merely a good teacher, not merely a miracle worker, not merely a remarkable rabbi who did phenomenal miracles, but he was the very Son of God who became sin for us. He took upon himself our sin, our guilt, our punishment. He suffered all things for us. And so we are told that if we look to him, look to him on the cross, look to him as the way out of our predicament, our sin predicament, the poison of sin, that's the end of us. That means death to us. If we look to him, we will experience healing and wholeness in the sense that we will experience the forgiveness of all our sin, of all those things that we did that we never should have done, and of those failures to express love and mercy when we had the opportunity. It's the focus of our attention. Look no place else. Don't look at what you can do. It's not a matter of you doing it's not a matter of you climbing up some ladder of success or even a ladder of sacrifice. It's not a matter of you doing all kinds of good deeds. For God in Jesus Christ has done it all. He has died once for all that we who look to him will have to look, look no other place. We put our trust and confidence in him in him alone. That's why we are told to seek first the kingdom of God. That is to be the focal point of our whole life. If we get that together, everything else falls in place. If we receive him, if we receive the gift of forgiveness and mercy that he offers to us, we have nothing to fear. Oh, we may have financial losses. We may have bad health. And eventually we will die and leave this planet. But that's not the end. For God has gotten us the victory through this only son who was hung on the cross for the sins of the world and who was raised on the third day. Amen. We pray, Father in heaven, we come to you for ourselves. For we need your refreshment. We need your guidance. We can do nothing without you. And we want to do your will. We want to be a blessing to others. And so we ask for your continued blessing on each of us. Help us to see the way that you would have us go. 
Guide us in the decisions that we make each day. Help us to have our focus on you and the gift of your Son. Give us a hunger for your word, the scriptures. Help us to be faithful people of prayer. Help us to see those opportunities that you place before us to be a blessing to others. We pray for our congregation that not only as individuals we might be a blessing to others, but as a group of fellowship, we might spend time in your word, in prayer, and in ministry in serving the community in which you have placed us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also are exposed to TV and the internet and newsprint. And just in our conversations, we see around us a divided nation, a broken people. We shudder sometimes at those words, those descriptions that are made of other people the, quote, opposition. And sometimes we share a love for you and a trust in your mercy in Jesus Christ, and yet we have different decisions, different perspectives in terms of what's good and what's not so good. We are divided politically. We are divided in other ways, sometimes economically, sometimes educationally, sometimes simply by neighborhood, sometimes ethnically. Help us, O oh Lord, to come together as you would have us come together. May the gospel that unites us be supreme and where there is no belief, no acceptance of what you have done for us in creation or in redemption, let us still treat others with respect, for we are all created in your image. We pray for the leaders of our nation and the nations of this world, for our community leaders, that they might all seek to do what is right, that they might all strive for peace, for harmony, for justice, for mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we also think of those individuals that we know of that are hurting, those that are listed in our bulletin, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, loss of loved ones because of death or even because of broken relationships. And we pray for those who are experiencing bad health, who are struggling, who may even be on hospice. We pray for them, for their healing, for the healing of those who are injured, for those who simply are worried and anxious. We pray that you would touch all these individuals with your healing touch, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would see fit to use us according to your loving will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We don't have any additional announcements. We wish you God's blessing this week. May you hunger for his word and be satisfied. Amen.